What's up, everybody, and welcome to the Weekly Flare Podcast, episode 49. I'm James Walter, and with me is the brand new Star Wars fan, Mr. Chris Garcia. That is not true. That's not true at all. <laughs> no. No. I've been watching it ever since I was very little. Happy Festivus, everybody. It is December 23rd as recording, but this won't be posted until... This will be posted... Well, it'll be posted tonight. Okay. Because I'm out of town for the next week and a half. So, so, so happy Festivus. It has to go up tonight or it won't go up until the new year. Good. So, yeah, that's that. Chris. Yes. Chris, Chris, Chris. Are you off for Christmas? I am off for Christmas. This Christmas Day. Christmas Day. I am working my butt off tomorrow. 10 well, to 5. That's great, because you got to make that Christmas money. Money. I am off, but I have to go back tonight when we're done recording. Really? Yeah, and check on a test and hit, make sure everything's okay and hit continue. So mm. when we are done recording You're leaving our string of awesomeness for the night, then I have to go back. So here's what's going to happen. We're recording right now for this week, for the week of December 23rd, because I guess we date our episodes on Wednesdays now. Uh, we're recording episode 49. It'll go up this week. And then when we're done recording, we're going to turn off everybody except for the camera. So by Meerkat and Periscope, you guys will not be with us live while we record episode 50, which we're going to record right now, well, right after this. So we have something for you for next week, a nice little treat to kind of tide you over to the new year. And then we'll be back in January for episode 51. Also... We will be talking about stars in this episode, but don't worry. No spoilers, no spoilers. in this episode. We are going to do a separate uh, little mini episode that will only go up on probably YouTube. So you don't have to worry about getting into your podcast stream and hearing spoilers that you don't want to hear. It'll be on YouTube, so you have to really want to hear it to hear it. And then that's that. So that's everything that we're doing tonight. So let's get started because while we don't have a lot of topics to talk about in any particular show, we have a lot of shows to record and it is already 8 o'clock p.m. We are running a little late. I had to work tonight and I didn't get out of there until 7.15. It takes uh, 20 minutes to get over here. So I didn't have anything prepped so we won't be doing any stories today. Um, boo. I know. I wish I had a soundboard but I'll, <laughs> I'll, boo, my, I'll boo for you. We've But the next this week and episode next week, we're going to be... Push them through. Yeah, it'll be great. Don't worry. We're here for you. It's not going to be garbage episodes, we promise. It'll be good content for you to enjoy. For instance, Chris, did you hear that SpaceX landed the Falcon 9 rocket successfully? You told me that as soon as I walked in the door. Well, we that's very because, Chris, it was amazing. So I watched the web. Well, I didn't watch the webcast live because I was at work and forgot to turn it on. Um, also because I'm going to be out of town for the next week and I find anyone's up on my data, but I just watched it and dude, it was amazing. That rocket took off, separated, the Falcon 9 came back down. It was almost a perfect landing. It just came down and it just, I, I can't describe how perfect it was, but you have to really, you should really go watch it. You should go watch the webcast that they have up on their page and it's at about like 30 minutes is when the landing happens because like they start at the beginning and talk about the rockets and all the science and everything and then they have to watch the takeoff and then the rocket has to get up there into space separate come back down that takes a while so does he do does he do it like tony stark and uh iron man the first one where he's sitting there and he's talking about it and he just and it, it explodes and then he just stands there and Oh, no, 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 no. It was a very, the, now the, the people that were there, especially the SpaceX people, they were very excited. You could hear them screaming and the energy in the room and outside of the, the room for the launch control was just amazing. And it was very emotional and it was very awesome. And I'm very proud of them, even though I have nothing to do with them at all, because this is a huge, huge advance for reusable rockets. So Jeff Bezos, who's you know amazon but he's also has blue origin he sent out a tweet to spacex and was like hey spacex congratulations welcome to the club at least they're good sports about because it. you know earlier this you know about a month or so ago we talked about blue origin landing their rocket which mm -hmm. doesn't actually go all the way up into space but still came back down and landed which was impressive was so. it was a spacex six months ago that crashed it was about six months ago yes this is uh six months ago spacex had their 
one of their Falcon 9 rockets exploded. And I believe this was their first launch since then. So not only were they recovering from an explosion, which is very difficult for them because it's a lot of money and time goes into one rocket and then to have it explode kind of sets you back a bit. Mm -hmm. So not only was this their first mission since then, they also attempted another landing. They did it on solid land this time instead of trying to do it out in the ocean on a barge. It worked out well for uh, Blue Origin. So they said, hey, let's just go ahead and try it. We have the space. They had the clearance around the launch pad in case there was something that happened. Uh, No problems. And I think the whole United States has had good weather as well. Uh, This was Texas, right? I believe the launch and landing happens in Cape Canaveral, Florida. Ah, there's always good weather. Which they had to delay it a day because it actually the takeoff weather was fine, but the landing weather would have mm, been terrible. Yes. So they had to delay it a day to make sure their landing weather was favorable, which is probably a first in a space flight, having to delay it for landing weather. But uh, rockets have been delayed for takeoff because, you know, you don't want to do it in high wind conditions because... Mm-hmm. You know, there's not really a whole lot that stabilizes a rocket other than the fact that it's going really fast. So wind isn't good. But they did it. And now we are one step closer to having affordable space flight. Meaning me and you could afford to go to space. We should try it. That's what I mean by affordable. Because you could already buy a ticket to space and like go up and float around. But it's, it's just too expensive. Mm-hmm. Nobody wants to do that. We want to pay like a thousand dollars. I think would be a reasonable I think that would be price good. to yeah. start with. Two thousand. I would probably pay five thousand a ticket. I think that would be. A, I would pay that. Probably. I think. I think five thousand. I would pay for it. Um, if they how, could get it to five thousand, I'd be in without even considering. Yeah, definitely, it. I'd just be there. Just what do about, it. What about um? How much is skydiving? Mm. I don't know, probably a couple hundred. Would you consider doing that? Oh yeah, let's do it. I would. Let's. I'm thinking about. I'm considering on doing it one day. I would consider it for sure. I think it'd be fun. You have to do it like a bunch of times so you could do it. You know, without having someone strapped to your back. Yeah. So you have to do like a bunch of dives first, and I, I don't know if I want to do that many dives, but I also don't know that I want someone strapped to my back. But you have to. Yeah. You know? So I want to do enough so I can do one without someone strapped to my back. But that's a lot of times you got to jump out of an yeah. airplane. I've got to get a phone case with a lanyard. Or you could just like not take your phone. No, I'm filming it. Why don't you take a different camera? Good point. Like I'm probably, I would take my GoPro. Well. And I like get the wrist one for you. You know what mm. I think the issue is, is like, if I did bring another camera, but I dropped it, then I still wouldn't have the footage. So I'd like something with a lanyard still. Right, but not your phone. That's a risk I'm willing to take. That's, that's insane. <laughs> Especially for you who never buys a new phone. I got a 6. Yeah, but that was, you came from a 3GS. I'm giving you a 4S. Yeah, but you didn't buy the 4S new. You, like, got it. Yeah, free. like, when the 5S was out, yeah. But I will be getting the 6S pretty soon. The 6S is a success. Exactly. Exactly. Or you know way. what else is a success? What's that? MIT's X-ray vision. Ooh. Okay, now. You're going to explain this to don't me. Don't get worried. This isn't like they can see through your clothes X-ray vision. This is like they can see through walls and notice that there's a person on their side and know that they're moving or sitting or picking something up. Uh, it's not like they can like see like definitive features of something through the walls. Basically, what they're doing is they're using radio signals and it's a very technical stuff what they're doing. But basically, they're using all the radio waves and everything everywhere and tracking movement through walls. Mm-hmm. It's super clever. And a little company is going to spin out of MIT and start marketing this in like 2017 for like $300. Chris, you know what they want to use this for? What's that? Tracking elderly and children. Wow. Okay. So you don't have to wear anything. Now, the article is really funny when you're reading because it's like talking about being able to see through walls. And then like it goes into a quote and the quote says like, you don't, you don't have to wear anything. But the way it was worded was like, you don't see that they're wearing anything 
like with the x-ray vision doesn't see clothes and i like had to read again i was like what and i was like oh no they mean that like the people that you're viewing through the other side of the wall don't have to be wearing anything yeah. special like it's all the device does it all without being connected to any particular person so it just means like the device in the other room i imagine the device in your mm -hmm. room or maybe it's just the device that you have i'm not sure they don't really explain exactly how it all works because I imagine they're still working on it and also they probably don't want to talk about it until they have all the copyrights and everything in place would be my guess and like patents and there's a lot of stuff going on but it's really cool and i wish they would have shown some like pictures or some video how it works they did not because they're mit and they probably don't have to to convince people that they have it working if they say they do because what would they gain from lying to us all being mit they would gain nothing i think this would be good for the military Yes, you could go into a hostage situation, see who's where, who has weapons. Um, it'd be great for police, for like hostage situations, to see who's where, who has <laughs> weapons. You're sensing a theme here, Chris. I know. We can track people's movements and they don't even know it. Black Ops 2. Chris, how many times in this month are we going to scare people? We made it all year without talking about really scary technology. And then we hit the end of the year. Four times. And it's like three times in a row where yep. it's just like, hey, this is really cool and really and scary. And very scary at the same time. Did we talk about scary stuff all year and I only just now noticed it? Yeah, no, we didn't. I think it was just at the end. Okay. I think so too. And I apologize for ending the year with like this scare fest. But at least it's not Y2K. No. Because that was a scare fest. It's Y215. But the good news about Y2K was here in America, we had like a good six to 12 hours to prepare because, you know, the rest of the half the world yeah. went into the future first. Exactly. So they would have freaked out first. Now, a lot of those countries probably didn't have as many computers. China. Does China, is China 12 hours ahead of us? I guess I they, they are. are. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah, but not in 2000. Either way, Either even, way, even then, 2000, there was not that many, like, in hindsight, there wasn't that many things that were tied to computers that would have been just completely catastrophic. Maybe, like, the stock market, I think, was, like, the biggest thing that the they were worried about. The stock market was worried, yeah. That was the biggest Other thing. Other than that, there weren't a lot of things that were tied. Like, we, like, I remember we had a personal computer, but, like... If it had gone on the fritz, like we wouldn't have really lost anything. No, I I don't. I don't even, know how much stuff we would have really. I don't even remember that year, honestly. I I don't even remember the freak out. You don't remember everyone worried about mm -mm. going into about computers not being able to roll over. I mean, let's see. How old was I? I was only seven. Oh well, there you six go. or seven. I mean, I don't think I was really. I didn't. I didn't understand it. Oh well, okay. Well, that's fair. I was, I would have been nine. I would have been almost 10. So mm -hmm. I would have kind of understood it, but not totally. Which may be why I don't know how many things were actually connected to computers at the time. Yeah. Because I just wouldn't have cared. Not because I wouldn't have cared, I just wouldn't have known. But, anyways, sorry for the scare fest. Um, Terminator came out this year. It's not my fault. Yeah. That's what I'm blaming it on Terminator. All right, Chris, let's take a break. Okay. We've been rambling on for quite a bit now. When we come back, we are going to talk completely spoiler-free. Promise, if there's any spoilers, I will edit them out. If you're watching live and there's any spoilers, I'm sorry. But we're going to really, really, really intend on no spoilers right now, Chris. Okay, you got to promise. I've got to try. got to promise our viewers on Meerkat and Periscope, no spoilers. Because they can't turn it off or skip ahead to the <laughs> unedited parts. And then when we come back, we're going to talk about... Uh, Christmas and the New Year because that's coming up, and uh, we're not talking about like Hanukkah and all that because neither of us have really observe any of those. Not because we're ignoring them, we just don't observe them, so we yeah. wouldn't have anything to actually say about it. So don't go away. We'll be right back. 